Hey, welcome. Enjoying your blended family, all my B fams out there. We are the coming for a fun Friday. I don't know either, but you got the shaky shaky. Today I'm in a dancing mood. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she's just like, damn, we're going to have a dance pate. Yeah. So we're, we're going to Well, have it's because this episode today, I mean, it's like a bittersweet episode for most people that are listening because it's the end of summer. End of summer. School is starting back for the majority of people out there. And so you're having a transition. So it's kind of bittersweet. Some people love it. Some people hate it because yeah. you're ending the summer, which is a lot of fun with your family. But also, if you've had a lot of kids at your house over the summer, you're not used to it. Or just, you know, life with kids, it's feeding kids and the air conditioning bill for kids um, when they're home all summer. It's just a lot. So maybe you're excited that school is could, starting back. Could be. You could be excited. You could be, yeah, it is that bittersweet. But regardless, it is coming to an end and it's time to transition. But what can you do to have some fun before it does end? So we're going to talk 10 things that you can do as a familia <laughs> in just a minute. Here we Y'all go. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so we're going to share with you these 10 things that you can do. For the EOS. He wanted to call this EOS. EOS. I'm like, no one in the world is going to know what EOS means. End of summer, everything's an acronym. Means. EOS. Or end of school, I guess it could End of school, oh yeah. End of summer school. We both start with <laughs> S. So, now, you've probably been doing stuff all summer long, or maybe you've been working and you've been meaning to do stuff all summer long, so whichever bracket that you fall in. But this is a time where you can make this transition season, this transition period of from one thing to the next and just make it a little bit more like enjoyable or yeah, fun, you memorable, know? enjoyable, yeah. fun for the family. You know how it goes when you are in a blended family and your kids may have been gone for the month of July and now they're coming back. And so using that knowledge, like, okay, my kids have been gone for a month. It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough when they come back. How can we make this better? What's what would they enjoy most? So keep that in consideration. Or maybe you've been the one with, and I'm just going by like normal like stuff that we see. Blended family stuff. Yeah, normal blended family stuff that you've had the kids for the month of July and now they're fixing to have to go back. And so how can you like go out with the bang kind of style? Make this something that y'all can do as a group. Now, if you've been going nonstop, you may want to do some of these ideas are more chill. So you might want to do the more chill ideas. If you have really like summer just went by like that and you're like, oh crap, we haven't done anything major or big and I, we really wanted to, then there's some ideas for that too. Some that are free, some that cost just a little bit and some that might cost you just a little bit more. But it is all about having fun because when you have fun, Together, you stay together. When you have fun together, you grow together. Mm -hmm. When you have fun together, I could probably keep going. Probably could, because there's but a lot of things that happen. You laugh together. You laugh together. When you have fun, to get, you know, and yeah, but we won't keep going. We'll, <laughs> we'll stop it there. You get the point. Yes. But the thing is really to make sure that you're being intentional and doing something that is fun before school starts. This can be some of the most memorable times because your kids are anxious most of the time, I, I remember me going to school, starting, fixing to start, how anxious I was not knowing what this year would hold. Our kids, same way. So this is a way to help also alleviate some of that tension and just go have some fun. Not think about it. Just go yeah. do it. Have fun. Enjoy it. But here we go. Top 10 things. Are you ready to start diving into it? I am. And All when right. I say this, number 10 you may think like that does not sound like fun, but number 10 is rearrange the room. Now this doesn't have to cost. It did not sound fun for me, but, but I want to, here's the point behind it. Especially if you have kids that are in a transitional season of school, like maybe they're going to kindergarten, like their first year of school, or maybe they're going to middle school or high school or off to college. These are like really pivotal points and using this time to just like give their room a facelift. It doesn't even have to be that you go buy all new stuff. You may want to do that or you may trade out some stuff that you've have at the house, but there's something about a new 
arrangement in your room. I mean, there, you, there is no, you're, you're right. And I just don't like doing it. You know, maybe there, I, I love it whenever I come in, it's like, Oh, this is different. This is new, but it, it, it is fun. You know, that, that is, that is a part of the fun and, and maybe having your kids involved in how you rearrange it. Maybe their, their headboard is up against the window. So you turn the bed around and <laughs> then they're facing. The <laughs> <laughs> That'll wake them up every day. <laughs> but yeah, just like... simply moving the bed positions is one and getting their input. Probably they would not suggest that, <laughs> uh, but getting their input on it, like you clear out the room, get everything in the hallway, clean it up a little bit, maybe even put a fresh coat of paint. If you're the kind of person that loves to do that in our family, we both hate it. So that's not our thing. Throw a picture up on the wall, move a picture. My grandma used to let me though go pick. There would be this like very thin row of wallpaper, but it was trim. Mm. And I would get to go pick out that trim and I would just go and place it all along the the room border oh, to make okay. and it would just give it a freshness of that so just something like that that they can just give it a little facelift get rid of some things that they don't need and especially like we said if they're in that transition period it just gives an excitement a newness like maybe your kids transitioning to a bigger bed like using this time to do that they got maybe all they, these get, they get one of those lightning mcqueen beds the little yeah. race car beds. You can see what Randall is dreaming about. Yeah, it's like, man, they need that in a king size. Come on, y'all. Aye, aye, aye. And maybe, y'all, you know, you got all these new school clothes, so you need to get rid of some. So taking some time to go through and pulling out the old and putting in the new, maybe even having like a fashion show with their new school clothes in the process. So anyways, that's number 10. So number 10, rearrange the room. Now number nine, number nine is camp out do a camp out go and you know now saying this you might be like you might be living in a place to where you're hitting the you know triple digit numbers so yeah. camping out does not sound fun we've tried that actually in south texas and it was miserable but if that is your case maybe you're not maybe you're in a state that or in a country that is cooler and camping out is a great thing to do. Go camp out. If not, then we did a whole camping without camping episode yeah. that gives you alternatives to camping. So, so maybe you're glamping or maybe you're camping in your house, pitching a tent in your living room, things like that. So they're yeah. not just camping out. Now, if you can camp out, that's always a great way because you're getting out in the nature. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We thrive as human beings when we get out into nature. Most of us do, but there's, yeah. you know, we miss that part because it seems like we're inside working all the time. And campsites really are very reasonable. They are. So being able to go and pitch a tent and stay outside, I mean, the amount that it costs to be able to do that is not that bad. And then the food that you're going to eat anyways, just being, you know, think about it ahead of time and plan things that can be cooked. I was even thinking of that Yogi Bear. I, I don't know, you know, where everyone is at but there's like a yogi bear park that it's a big yeah. campsite and they've got little things to do they got you can fish they got a little water park they got putt putt just all kinds of things there and yeah. you could uh, go pitch a tent there or you could bring your camper all kinds of options you do it, it just you it and your fun. family invite some other group families whatever that looks yeah. like and you cook out you know you're doing a lot of grilling and just hanging out and enjoying each other's company those are always fun times being able to camp out good so, yeah, stuff so number, that's number nine. nine now number eight may be for that person that y'all have been going all summer and this may also sound lame but don't knock these things till you actually try them number eight is pj's all day all day <laughs> Now, some of y'all might be saying we live in our PJs all summer anyways, <laughs> but some of you may not. And this is one of those things you can make it into a game. Like you don't get out of your PJs. You basically try to see how long you can sit on the couch all day long. Now, again, some people, y'all may have been resting and relaxing all summer, so this would not be ideal for you. But if you're the family that has been going nonstop and you haven't had time to just sit and breathe, I remember looking back at, like, raising our children, one of the things that I missed out on was just sitting on the couch and holding them while we watched TV yeah. because we were the family that was going, doing all the time. And so it was those things that we just didn't sit 
on the couch and just chill together. So try to see how limited amount of time, besides going pee and getting some food, you don't get off the couch or out of the bed. Yeah, I was fixing to say, maybe you have like a bigger bed and you invite all the kids and you got a TV in your room and you just chill there, watch movies, watch... Play some board games. Yeah, no, whatever. I but spy. You're just, yeah, yeah, you're just having fun staying in your PJs all day. Now, if you're the type to where you go commando, then I, you know, I... Why would that, you? That would not be a good thing. Unless <laughs> the kids are gone and you're having to do this, just you spouse. and your spouse. Well, there you go. It's, it's, then if those are your PJs... That could be a fun, that could be that a would be fun, a fun day. marriage thing right there. A fun way to end the summer. Yeah. Especially, we have a lot of followers that are both teachers <laughs> So if you're both teachers and you don't have your kids for the weekend or whatever going into the the school year, have a day where you wear nothing all nothing, day long. All you may day. have to avoid the windows or put the blinds down ahead of time, but hey. Yeah, or you're giving the neighbors a show. I don't know, but then <laughs> <laughs> just don't get in trouble over that one. But yeah, no theory because I don't know why we took a south turn on that one. Guess you did. That's fun. <laughs> uh, and number seven is stay up all night. Stay up all night. I put this one connected to the PJs all day because you may want to do these like back to back. But I know like lock-in styles, staying up all night is not something, especially the older you get, we have learned we do yeah. not do well. But here in this I, trans- cr- I cringe when I said, I'm like, Eesh. Yeah. Like me, 9, 10 o'clock, I'm like ready to lay in bed and do nothing. But- it takes you out of that norm that you are now. You're doing something completely different. And we always had a thing when we were in the youth group. We said, okay, we're going to do lock-ins because kids love this. Kids mm. love being able to do this, seeing how late they can stay up. So we would commit to at least one a year that we yeah. would do. And it was fun. But the thing is, if you're going to stay up all night, you got to stay busy. So you got to have activities or things that you're doing. If not... You're going to crash out. If you're saying, we're, we're going to stay up all night and watch movies, you're going to, you know. Yeah, you're going to fall you know. asleep. But planning some things that are back-to-back, kind of like when you do like a New Year's plan, having things that you're doing each hour, including things like movies. Maybe even there's some nighttime things. Like sometimes I have like all-night bowling, um, just random things like that all-night skate that you could go and participate in. Yeah, those are fun. So going and just doing that for a couple hours. And then, like, during this time, you want to just use this because your kids might get a little cranky. You can have some fun with it. They might get a little cray-cray. Yeah, they might, you know, they might not be used to it. So just go in with that mindset and also know you need a couple days to recoup after this. For sure. You're going to need a day the next day to sleep all day or like stay in your PJs, like we were saying, because the older you get and even the younger kids, like they, you still need your sleep. So you're going to have to sleep the next day. Maybe you start out the night catching one of the late shows, like the latest movie that there is, and you'll start the night out that way. Because that's always fun. Hardly anybody's in the movie theater and you're going and just kind of kicking the night off. That's always a fun idea. And you could teach your kids what it is like to go through Whataburger at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Get that started early. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Oh, I was going to say one more thing on that about staying up all night. And then you said that and I completely lost it, but it was good. It was good. It was was so good. It slipped your mind. It really wasn't that good. I was going to tell a story. When I was in fourth grade... When I was in fourth grade, me and my friend, we decided to stay up all night long. It was the very first time that I stayed up all night. And the next morning, I had one of those, like, oatmeal packets that, you know, you, like, they're in little brown bags, and you rip the top off, and I made myself a little oatmeal, and I was eating it, and I fell asleep face down into (laughs) the oatmeal. So that was my first experience. You know, we had sleepovers and stuff, but we never stayed up all night. That was the first night that I survived all night long. Love that. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> fun story. You probably yeah, didn't know that about me. I did not. No, I, I I think as a teenager, I had a few of those times. Not really as a kid. I didn't do that. But yeah, as a teenager, I would do that. And yeah, I have it, it was very late night staying up all throughout the night and then trying to roll home by about 6 a.m. after being at a friend's house all night. And then your parents want you to mow the lawn or something. Yeah, they're like, come on, let's get to work. Like, oh, <laughs> like, I didn't so sleep. sleep. <laughs> so, but doing that as a family, even maybe make like a fort, you know, a huge fort in your living room for y'all to all hang out at. Just Fortnite? something. No. Oh. 
Make a fort. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm we got to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Number, Number six. Number six. Is tour your own town. So tour hear me your... out here, okay? Put on one of those little clap caps and put a... And a fanny uh, pack. Fanny pack and a camera around your neck. <laughs> And then you all jump in the car, you get your camcorder, or nobody uses those anymore, your recording device, though. Your phone. Go to your information place for your town. Like, usually they have some sort of center. visitor information center. Go there and see what's the top. Or, since we're in 2022, Google top things to do and then put your hometown. And then It's start- more fun if you go to the center, though. Yeah. Because anybody can Google it, and, but you get the true experience when you go to your little center, your info center there. Yes, and you want to do the things not like your, if they have a trampoline park or something, you don't really want to do those things. You want to do the things that's unique to your town. It may be that you go find a monument that somebody did something special in your town and they made a monument out of it and it actually has a little museum attached to it somehow. Those are the things we don't think of. Walk in and even put like the the suntan lotion, the little white thing on your nose. <laughs> And walk in and go, hey, we're new here. What do we do? What, is there any cool things around here? The thing I and love about that. your dad cheesiness <laughs> is that there are listeners who either are the same. They get it <laughs> because they grew up and experienced the same life that or you're talking about. It. <laughs> or they're married to that person. And so they get it. Because like younger, I think our millennials or whatever, they'd be like, what <laughs> in the world? <laughs> yeah. But... You guys get it because yeah. you are our age. Yeah, yeah. And if not, you you know what I'm talking about because we've all seen movies. Yeah, you've seen the movies. So there you go. Tour your own town. Go There's to your always, free museums. Go to. You know, I can even think in our town, there are still things that I haven't done. That's a shame. In our town because I'm just like, eh. You know, I, yeah, I think there's just that, that stigma that when you live in a certain place, there are just certain tourist things that are like, yeah, I know this place. I don't want to do that. And it's really cool whenever we get out of that and go experience it. Why not? We should be the ones who experience it first, right? So we can tell for other people. sure. Yeah, I think but people take it for granted. We do. And, you know, I'm guilty of that as well. But that's number six. So now number five. Hang on. We'll be right back. Check this out. It's time to have some more blended family fun. Yeah. Are you ready? What was that? It's my new song. You like it? Um, sure, I guess. Well, it goes along with Enjoy the Journey, our new blended family roadmap to having fun together. Oh, okay. I get it now. I feel the excitement, but why don't you tell them about it instead of singing it? (laughs) Fine, I guess. Let me try. This is a fun journey for your family, a new experience. You could go to the movies again, or you could get this for your family and come out with a new plan that creates more fun opportunities in your family. You'll laugh more, have more fun together, and create lasting memories that keeps your family stronger and healthier. And it's also about having more fun. How was that? That was pretty good. I know that got them way more excited about the new journey they can go on as a family than your song did. What? Come on. You could have also told them that it not only creates more fun their whole family loves doing, but it also adds more fun for their marriage and new fun ways to connect with their kids individually. It's also great for that step-parent relationship. You could have said that too. I don't think you really appreciated my song. Aye, aye, aye. Anyways, Enjoy the Journey is ready for your family to start today. The link for more information is in the show notes. Have more family fun and create more lasting memories. Have more family fun with your blended family and enjoy the journey today. Yeah. Really? Let's get back to this episode. Number five, Cinco is a water day at home. A water day. Old school water day. I mean, you probably don't have a pool in your backyard, but you may have sprinklers. And if you don't have sprinklers, they have them for like 
a dollar something. It's true. You go hook up them sprinklers, get you some <clears throat> brown, or not brown, some black like trash bags and spread it out. Make yourself slip a and slip and slide. Get some water balloons and pack them up. Um, I saw this hack where you take the water balloons, you fill them up, you freeze them. Then you take them out and have them <laughs> as your like ice chest. Yeah. <laughs> throw a frozen Not balloon throw at the each frozen other. One. Let That's them thaw out <laughs> after the end of the day, and then you have a water balloon You're fight. You have that one kid that's like, yeah. boom, thong. That would hurt no, really it bad. wasn't thawed yet. I thought it was. <laughs> that would be very painful. Yeah. So just know your audience. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Have some band-aids. But go old school with it. You can go and find all kinds of like things at the dollar store that they're even like the, if you, if water balloons sound like a lot of work because they are, they've gotten a lot better with how they've created them, but you can get these like little squish balls that are for the pool, but just getting some pail, like what are those five gallon Um, buckets? Yeah. Like a bucket of water that you're going and filling them up and throwing them at each yeah, other. Yeah, you just dump them in there, and then you're they're reusable, so you're not having to, like, pick up all but that But even having a uh, sprinkler is great, just doing sprinklers. So, yeah, we, we talked about that. We actually did an episode on July 4th, so go listen to that one, but it had we shared a lot of fun water things that you can do outside. Yeah, that is And true. we even talked about, like, uh, I, I remember put, putting this one out there, but we had never tried croquet before croquette however you want to pronounce it but we had bought this set and we started playing it but what fun would that be to set a game up out there and throw a couple sprinklers in it so now you're doing like a water croquet yeah so you know you're you're starting to get creative and doing things with that idea i did not not on the episode but i did on social media oh so yeah that that was i had uh, a few fun things that you could do with water, and, and that was one of them that I would thought of. I'm like, that's genius. Yeah, that so sounds like fun. So wh- what can you do to, to just spice up some of these fun things? So, yeah, there it is. Have a water day at home. You will love it, especially in August because August is normally it pretty is hot. hot. So we need a little water, a little agua to wash things down a little bit, cool things off. So that's number five. Yes, number five. So now we're down to number four. Now for you social butterflies, this one is perfect for you. I'm a pretty little butterfly. (laughs) Can't say anything. (laughs) Nothing. Can't say anything. Nothing is safe. (laughs) Host a party at your house. So it may be that you're doing an end of summer bash for your kids and their friends. It may be for all of the cousins to come over because you know you want to be the cool aunt and the cool uncle. It may be for your neighborhood to come over or just your your extended family but you have something or you could just do it just you and the the family yeah. but make it into a party have their party. input on the food that you're having or if you're having outsiders come in have them bring some stuff so you have like a potluck kind of party but how fun to in summer and make it like your thing like this is what your house does is they have the party every year that the kids want to come to it's very nice when they're younger and then as the kids get older and they're teenagers that you get to be the cool house yeah block party come on y'all bringing it back just heck yeah party it up in the neighborhood i we actually my my bonus mom she their neighbors do that they all kind of do block parties and stuff still yeah, it's like cool. Halloween, yeah, like it's they like, come and everybody brings really? their food over. That is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So there you go. So My that is number four, host a party. So number three is probably one of my favorites, water park. Do yes. a water park. Go to a water park. We have here uh, close to us in, in uh, Texas is what we call Schlitterbahn. It's a German name. But it started in New Braunfels, was their main park. Then they expanded to two other parks in Texas. Loved going there. Went there just about every year growing up. And then as an adult, been there several, several times. Just love going to water parks and doing the slides and on the rides. And kind of what we found out just with our family is... We would do like a water park or we would do an amusement park. But normally like the week before school starts, it's almost empty. Yeah. We would go there, plan a trip, and like nobody was there because everybody's getting ready for school. So what a great time to go and plan one of those trips because you might be able to 
catch a lot more rides and a mm-hmm. lot less waiting in line doing that. Yeah, so definitely perfect time to do that. There's also really bad times to do that. So check that and see when their most popular times are so you can avoid that going during the week and that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, definitely going during the week is the better options on those if you can. But yeah, go to a water park. Water parks are fun. Like yeah. they've got one, I think it's in Ohio. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I might be wrong, but it's supposed to be, have like some of the best, like the biggest water ride. Or I don't know. Maybe oh, I'm really? mixing that up with roller coasters. Who knows? But yeah, I don't know. But yeah, there's all kinds out there. So find the one that's close to you. Find a water park. And go do that. Bite the bullet. If you're like, oh, I don't know about that, just go to Wally World. Just do any it. Any Chevy Chase, uh, uh, what, what was that? Uh, vacation. Vacation. Any vacation fans out there? Go to Wally World the whole trip. Yeah, you know? the whole way. They're trying to get there, right? Except that was an amusement park, but yeah, it wasn't a water you park. You can do that, too, if you don't have a water park. But when it's summertime, you want that. You want you a water want park. the water park. So number three, water park. Now, number two, number two is a day road trip. Road trip? Now, I don't know that Randall would love this because he's not much of a driver. But me and my friend and my kids... We did this not long ago. We took a day trip all the way, like three and a half hours away to just go do some things in that town. So it took the entire day. We left that morning. We drove all the way for, because we live south of Houston. We drove all the way to Austin and we went and we explored some things that are like touristy things you have to do in Austin. Then we got back in the car and we drove all the way back. Yeah. See me, uh, you know, I'm not, you say I'm not a driver. The thing is, is I've driven a lot and I've done a lot of long trips in my day. Back in my day, I've done a lot of long trips so much that I feel burnt out on the long trips. I'd rather fly. So the reason, reason I used to, I used to enjoy road trips. Yeah, but I think you don't like it because you like to drive in silence. If you're going to do a day road trip, you need to have the best playlist so know your peoples y'all come up together create this music that you can sing find some like question and answer thing like things to ask while you're on the road trip have some fun places to stop along the way my friend and i we just went out of town not long ago and we stopped at some random huge eyeball so weird but a (laughs) huge eyeball in the middle of the city and so looking at you we took like a 20 minute detour and we went to go check out this huge eyeball there's things weird stuff like that all around us so go find one of those things along the way on it but i made this number two because i think it's just i don't know it's just something to get out of the norm and get out and go experience something and it only takes the day it's not like you're doing this planned whole vacation you can do it with the whole family you can do it with whoever you have available you can do it with your spouse i love the thing i've never tried it like you get a dice and you just roll the dice and if it lands on whatever number you turn right or left. Like every time you get to a cross section where you have to make a decision, you roll a dice or flip a coin. Odd, you go left. Yeah, something like that. And I've never done it, but it sounds really cool. Maybe we should try it. You want to surprise me with that? (laughs) You wind up in like some off the wall town like you see in the horror movies. (laughs) Children of the corn start coming Oh gosh. (laughs) The hills have eyes. Dang it, I should have rolled a one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Move or it on. could be the complete opposite. You find a really cool town, I guess. Yes. So, so. I think that, all that towns could... are unique. I mean, except the ones where they're eating people. Yeah. yeah. Probably not what you want to do. <laughs> but I think all towns have such uniqueness to them. So just finding somewhere new to and know like how far you're driving out where you're going to stop because you don't want to be 15 hours in because then you got to drive 15 hours <laughs> that back. is true know when the turnaround point is for you yes go ahead and have that time in your head hey but that is number, number two one. number one Here we go. Do, 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 do. and i just thought this was a really cool idea number one is stay, stay in, in a, a hotel, hotel. In, in your, your town. hometown. Oh. <laughs> that I was figured I'd say it with you. Thank you. <laughs> Just for the dramatics. And for those that couldn't understand us, <laughs> stay in a hotel in your own town. So I saw this on Pinterest and I thought that's kind of cool. I don't think we've ever done that before, but I have had a friend that's done that. 
And you just go find a nice hotel in your area and you pack the kids up and you go rent it for the night or two nights. Find one. I had a friend that found one that just has a really cool pool and they went and they, she has three boys and she just let them, you know, they had a great time at the pool during the day and they had a fun time just playing around in the hotel at night and running and getting ice from the ice machine and snacks from the snack, eating the free breakfast and all of that stuff that we don't really think about. But when you're at home, you feel the obligation of home. You, yeah. you see the laundry, the dishes. I got to do this. Well, yeah. before we go out to the yard, let me make sure we do this. So yeah, it takes all that responsibility Puts yeah. it away to where now you can just focus and have fun with each other. And then you don't have all the driving or the added expenses because you are local. Yeah. So stay in a hotel in your hometown. And if you want to really make it a challenge, stay in like the cheapest one. <laughs> you keep taking this so far south. And get, the, and get a great experience, you know. <laughs> or there, we got us a hotel room. And or how about the opposite? You stay in yeah, the most, you stay in the, the fanciest, best Yelp like review your shirt, hotel. Um, the yeah, the fanciest hotel. I don't think we talked about this shirt in this episode. Oh well, you've got a fancy shirt on again. So this is like one of your favorite shirts. It is. She's got a Reba McIntyre fancy. Here's your one chance. Fancy, and it's written um, to you from fancy. Fancy. So, and that was one of those really cool things. I was going to say that earlier. But then I was like, well, I just mentioned that last time in one of the other episodes. But And I couldn't remember the town name. I, we should have looked it up in between. But it's just one of these things that the locals don't even take advantage of. But Reba McIntyre grew up in this town. And they created this museum around it. And Lane Frost. Do y'all know who he is? Do you know who he is? I've heard the name. He is like a famous bull rider. They made, Luke Perry made the movie Eight Seconds mm. off of him. They both grew up in this town. And some guy that ended up making like the mask from Planet of the Apes. He's very good at that kind of stuff. But all these people came from this very small town in Oklahoma and they have a museum for it. These are the kind of things that you can find when and you the were, locals don't take advantage of it. They don't. They, the, my friend's mom said, I have never been there. Or not her, her grandmother said, I have never been there. See, and that goes back to number six, tour your own town. There's so many things that are just here. But there it is. That is 10 things to do for some end of summer fun. The whole heart behind it is don't let fun in. Summer's ending, but don't let the fun in. Yeah. Keep it fun. You know, continue doing things with your family. Don't let this time of transition be one to where you all pull back and get ready for that. Your schedules start yeah, changing. Yeah, don't go back and, into this. Yeah. Then continue doing fun. You know, do it. Just have fun. Do it. Make it memorable. Make it memorable. Your kids, <laughs> your kids will appreciate it. If they don't appreciate it now, one day, they one will. Day. So take one of those and run. And there it is, number 10. 10 things to do okay. with your familia. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope this episode has been a blessing and encouraged your family journey. Make sure you stay connected with us and join our weekly blended family newsletter. We send an email out every Friday morning full of support and encouragement. And when you join, we also want to give you a free gift. So go get yours today. The link is in the show notes below. Have an amazing day. Remember to enjoy the journey with your blended family. And we'll see you on the next episode.